Well, this has been a truly insightful discussion. Before we conclude, I'd like each of our panelists to provide a takeaway from this program. Dr. Enzinger, you got, you got the floor. I right got then. the floor first. Well, certainly it was, uh, I enjoyed listening to my colleagues today and, uh, and certainly uh, listening to their very insightful uh, analyses of, of these various studies. Um, I think that uh, probably the most important take-home message I would uh, uh, um, take from, from these studies is that we've entered now a, a new era where we're really moving beyond cell cycle poisons and we're now moving into an era where we're adding immunotherapy. I think the early um, blush of excitement with immunotherapy probably is, is fading a little bit. Uh, as we realize that these agents uh, are not effective in, in the majority of our patients, and really this is going to become a tool for a subset of patients, and we ultimately need to figure out how to uh, move this forward in a way where we can uh, sustainably uh, treat the majority of patients uh, with this disease. Uh, I think that uh, some of the ideas that were presented here uh, certainly may improve uh, the uh, results uh, that we currently have with the checkpoint inhibitors. I think we really need to think outside of the box, not just do the checkpoint inhibitor plus something else, and uh, really think of, of other uh, ways of manipulating the immune system. But we really shouldn't forget some of the other targeted uh, therapies that are being developed. Uh, again, I think that uh, uh, um, FF, uh, 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 the fibroblast, uh, pathway will be important for some patients. MET is, I think, was exciting uh, a few years ago and then fell by the wayside. I think there are clearly a few patients that will respond to MET inhibition, and if we can find that group, uh, that will uh, be important. Uh, but ultimately, I think this is going to be uh, require multiple um, combinations of various uh, technologies to, to, to improve the outcome for our patients. Dr. Zhang Jingyan. I think the message has to be clear that gastric cancer is treatable and there is hope uh, and there's a lot of new agents and options coming out every year essentially. Even in my lifetime as an oncologist, we had several uh, you know, drugs that became FDA approved. It is important to look for these rare subsets and even if you think it may not be you know, the most um, you know, urgent uh, field to study, especially in U.S. and Europe where it's an orphan disease, important uh, cross-country and cross-continent you know, uh, continent collaborations answer some of these uh, important questions and push the envelope, find a specialist, you know, ask uh, educated questions, and uh, there are subsets that we can cure potentially. We just need to find that 5-10% population and focus uh, on small victories at a time. Very true. Dr. Shitara? Yes, uh, gastric cancer is a very uh, difficult disease to uh, treat still uh, because our keynote 061 trial showed a negative result as already discussed. But clearly, a subgroup of these patients achieved a remarkable benefit of this compound. So, gastric cancer is clearly very heterogeneous disease. Intertumor heterogeneity is always also a very issue. But this was also be overcome by newer hard to ADC. Uh, I, I forget to mention it, hard to new ADC, DSA211A, so the very attractive activity for hard to positive gastric cancer, as well as, uh, as, well as, as uh, hard to low breast cancer. This may overcome the intertumor heterogeneity by uh, bystander effect. So this kind of ADC compound may have a potential to be used for other targets. So uh, combining these multi modality treatment, maybe we can improve the outcome of gastric cancer. Very good, very good. Dr. Van Kutsen, professor. Yeah, we should not forget that gastric cancer is still the second cause of cancer-related mortality and that we have to tackle it from a, with a global view. There are differences in the epidemiology. There are differences in the therapeutic approaches. But if you look here at the panel with uh, uh, with uh, experts from different parts of the world. I think with collaboration that we can try um, and that we really are able to make progress. Uh, we have had some disappointments, but we have had already some successes. And I'm sure that if we can put the brains and the, and the working <coughs> power of everybody together, that we can make further progress for our patients. And that gastric cancer 
should not be at the longer term anymore the second uh, cause of cancer-related mortality. And uh, that's, that's also an important take-home message on top of some of the scientific uh, messages that were given by my colleagues. Yes, I mean, teamwork does make the dream work, right? We, it's, it's contrite, but it's true. Everybody coming together to do these studies on a global, on a global nature will change the future for our patients across the world. <coughs> so thank you for all your contributions to this discussion. On behalf of our panel, we thank you for joining us, and we hope you found this peer exchange discussion to be useful and informative.